Yeah. There's too much light. My blessed mess forsaken! These fairy tales are much too plain. So dull and dry, a lifeless dream. A warm bleak, I'll craft them dark to make them grim. That's my hallmark. My guts fill up with pretty tales. Their prissy cuteness never fails to make me puke. To lose my wits, to lose my teeth and give me fits. Now the rents it's stale and foul. It's nearly a pity we're not surprised that Briar Rose's parents are unable to protect her from a credible and precise death threat. But couldn't somebody, anybody, tell her to leave that spinning wheel alone? Lovely christening, ain't it, dearie? And a fine mess of loot. All the goods and gifts owing to a princess. Not half of what she deserves, you nitwit. A curse on all you biddies for leaving me off the guest list. We thought you were dead or balmy, you silly cow. You haven't been out of your hole in donkey's years. Don't try to reason with me. Here's my gift to the brat. At fifteen, Briar Rose will pierce her hand with a spindle and die. I will be avenged. Premature death for a blameless child? Typical. When another fairy converts this lethal curse into a hundred-year nap with a royal wedding to follow the wake-up call, it passes for good luck. Ah, oh, well. Despite her father's efforts to destroy every spindle in the kingdom, Briar Rose seeks her own appointment with her somnolent destiny. What are you doing, lady? It's very pretty. I'd like to try it. It's spinning, dear. Quite simple, really. Careless, unhandy, or simply because of the old fairy's dark magical decree. She pricks her finger and falls into a deep sleep. A nap's all very well, my girl, but where am I supposed to sleep? <laughs> The good fairy forgot to mention that Briar Rose wouldn't sleep alone. It's not your conversation, dear. I'm just feeling... <laughs> too much wine and too... <laughs> to prevent nosy or malevolent creatures from molesting the sleeping princess, a vast and impenetrable web of menacing brambles and jagged thorns grew up around the castle. Over the years, the rumor of a sleeping princess attracts several princes, not all of them savory suitors. Hedges be damned, I will find this woman and wed her, though she be as old as Methuselah. No, I will find this woman and wed her, though she look like my great granny. Of course, all of them failed miserably in their attempts and died pitiful deaths. The time was not right. A hundred years means a hundred years, even in a weak need fairy curse. I'll take my chances, old fellow. I'll win her hand, or add my rotting corpse to those who have preceded me. <laughs> By my count, this marked the 100th anniversary of her sleep. She and the whole court should awake tomorrow. <laughs> On the very next day, the prince finds the thorny hedge has turned into bowers of beautiful flowers. Talk about gilding the lily. Every sleeping thing he passes on his way to the castle awakens. All these creatures must be grateful to me for waking them, I suppose. And the princess will love me for it. <laughs> Here's a man with a limited grasp of his role in the story. But let him live with his illusions. Quite as good-looking as advertised. We'll get married, I suppose. I dreamed you were a better kisser. Bad dream. <clears throat> Perhaps you'd like a moment to freshen up. <clears throat> Indeed. 
classic morning mouth, perhaps. A hundred years without brushing. I wouldn't mind, of course, but perhaps he was looking for a more salubrious bus. They were married. <sighs> Great to do of a wedding, usual splendor and wretched excess, la di da di da. No mention of the good fairies who came to the christening or the one who cursed Briar Rose. Maybe the old bag died of boredom. Everything works out well for Briar Rose. Lots of waiting around for things to happen, wasn't it? While milk toast fairies stand yapping at the christening, a wicked old crank lays a curse on the head of the child. You call that a curse? I'll show you what real dark magic is. <laughs> Make it foul. Let's muck it up. Hello everyone, welcome back to American McGee's Grim. I am your mad host as always, and this is the tale of Sleeping Beauty. So we are all very familiar with this tale, of course. It's it's one of the more it's a classic tale that anyone has heard. And if not, you probably if you know what Disney is, you probably know it from there at least. Bri Briar Rose, or what however she is pronounced depending on the media. It, very differs from version but is a princess born of royalty in which she is given some gifts from fairies until one and more malevolent sort passes her for simply not being invited and says on her umpteenth birthday when she becomes of an older age and well more so one of of maturity and adulthood she'll prick her finger upon a spindle and well die isn't it lovely, really? Thank you, Grim. But, you know, that's all well and good. Curses happen, as silly as some may be, but surely we could do much more than that. And I'm gonna, we're gonna show exactly how you can make quite a bit of mayhem with a little bit of dark magic play. I mean, I'm certainly going to, if I get the chance. And also these lovely old fair fairies of old, we're gonna make them as destructive as they were meant to be. Hmm. But from the sounds of it, it would very much appear that we have someone who is trying to clean everything up. I cannot have that. Also, <clears throat> sorry, this is actually one of the longer stories as well in Grimm. I believe there is a total of eight scenes or something like that. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, there will probably be more cuts to this than normal, but I will do what I can, so. If there's more parts from this particular tale, you know why at least. So, without further ado, let us have a little lovely chat with... I was going to say let's have a chat with the fairy, the head fairy over there, but well, life sort of had a different turn, so let's do that properly now. Make it rotten. Stomping, stomping, butt kicking good. Now you see this is a more proper way to raise hell to quite literally bring hell into your cat inside your castle and if you notice in there uh, right in here there is a secret for you to grab if you are ever if you're ever curious and want to know where any of them are that's where at least one of them is this is pretty much where I stop knowing where any most secrets are but that's not really our main point here so let us move onwards to wait 15 years to see the curse fulfilled. Boring! 
I'm not waiting around. Let's muck about in another tale. Hey? Eh? I'm not entirely sure what Grimm means by moving to another tale, but... I mean, surely it's... 15 years aren't going to be that fast. They'll probably just skip by it. So, you know, I'll see you guys in 15 years then, for sure. Don't be a brilliant. A peasant with a craving for Rapunzel implores her husband to fetch the delectable stalks from their neighbor's garden. Fetch? That's stealing by another name. Oh, I like the odd bit of larceny. Let's give him a hand. Make it foul. Muddy it up. Hello everyone, welcome back to American Geese Grimm. This is the tale of Rapunzel. I am your mad host as always, and... Wait a minute. Was I just doing this before? Nah, couldn't have been. Why wouldn't I? This is a new tale! Of course we weren't doing anything before, that would be silly. Weird. Oh well. <clears throat> anyway, Rapunzel here. We remember this classic tale of a little girl, of a girl who is trapped in a long tower whose golden hair falls who has a long, largely long mane of golden hair, and eventually Prince finds her and lets the classic line of Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. And, well, a few other assorted tales. Um, I do apologize, I can't give my usual depictions of the stories because, quite frankly and sadly, I am not as familiar with Rapunzel as I wish I could be, so you guys have to kind of Bear in mind with that. Ooh, and what was that? That was quite the shake there. Either way, we have to assist our fr a wonderful friend of, who wants a bit of larceny, or eh, it, at best he wants to try to steal something that clearly does not belong to him. So we're gonna help him with that. And of course, by doing that, we absolutely destroy everyone with a cot! That may or may not have contained explosives. However, if you notice from us doing that lovely sequence of a new sequence of events, we have yeah, maybe have unlocked ourselves a little secret, which you can acquire rather easily by going over here. There we go, see? It's a rather easy symbol to get. It's an easy secret to get and in, well, it actually makes the backtrack over Stop here rather easily. Sorry, Graham, I did not mean to interrupt you with this butt stop, but let's continue on our day. Eh? Alright. So everything's looking lovely and patchy and rather thorn-like. I, I can, I don't quite remember much of Rapunzel that involved thorns, but yeah, you know what, I'm not gonna really question. It's a nice aesthetic, at least. It it keeps pretty consistent. Um, it is a little harder getting full darkness on this first little scene here. But, well, we'll see what we can do here. I'll do what I can for sure to make sure everything works perfectly, at least. Already the houses are looking quite deserving of a utter shithole. At least as I would expect. I am, I am certainly proud of it, but, well, I'm sure as you guys can pro rightly guess, we're not going to be done just yet. Especially with 30% we're only here. Nonsense, I say yes, I know, I agree, I would agree. Also, sir, stop running! I can't catch you if you just run away. Because, besides, it's for your own good. Knowing me, if, or knowing you guys, if you guys, like, got away from me, I do something as ridiculous as, I don't know, trying to clean up? And why would you want to do that when this place is really so much better when it's so gloomy? <laughs> the lovely haze that is on the sky. Why would you want to get rid of it? I don't see any reason why you should, and f quite frankly, that is all I need to know and why I'm going to say now. Don't delay, but stop away! Don't delay, but stop away! <laughs> Either way, let's move on. Rompin let's keep, stomp. let's continue, let's further our plot here, eh? Rompin, stompin, butt kicking good! Now, in 
in the thick of it, the thief holding his edible booty, and a chance for a clean getaway. I hate clean. Let's complicate things. <laughs> Make it rotten. Now here... Butt stomp it! Now here gives a very interesting scenario here, where we have to, well... Ascend our way to the top, and there's a bit of an interesting advantage of verticality being used in this part here, as well as we need to get some chains. And well, as you can see over there, there is a secret to be acquired in the body, in the mouth of that gator. Of that gator. And well, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't gonna attempt to try it at least once. All right, let's get ourselves in position at least, so we can attempt this. Ha! I got it! Actually, nice. I think I, I don't think I've ever done that one before. Hmm. Oh well. So we have a new power up here, the super jump. It's basically just as you can see, it is basically a glorified Suboka. It's a high, it's a higher jump for a brief limited time, but it's enough to get the job done. So yeah, we need to knock these chains down, and it's quite easy to do so. I mean, no harm can go it. down, and should on the off chance you do fall down again, you can always just use the super jump to, well, get back up. Stop it good. Or you can just mess up like I do, because unfortunately, platforming not my forte, sadly. Stop it. Or if I were a patienter man, I suppose, because I'm trying to get done with this, because if I remember correctly, delay, is a rather long tail. Trying to make this as painless for you guys as I can, so this is the time where I kind of need my platforming skills to not completely suck. But thankfully, at least I've already gotten part of them, part of it done. So we only have a few. We only have just the one chain done. But you know, being a perfectionist and everything, gotta make sure I get everything converted and whatnot. So right, let's. Okay, I, I think that's about as everything as I can go, get done, so let's move on, Riz. Oh, oh, did I mention that the neighbor was a witch? But she didn't even curse him out properly. That's no punishment. Theft is a capital offense. Hey, it's not my law. Make it nasty. Oh, how could I... Rump and stump! How could I forget about the witch? It's a classic in Rapunzel's tale. There's a witch who guards her tower. Chomp and stump! How, how ignorant of me. I'm terribly sorry, people, but... Even Bunch so, let us it. continue onwards. Ooh, that's got to hurt. The witch punished the thief and snatched the daughter. That's as it should be. He tried to save his own ass at his child's expense. Total failure. Later, hag, I hear a spindle rattling. Briar Rose is about to get pricked. Briar Rose? That's not Rapunzel's name. Wait. I do feel like I've been doing this. Nah. I don't know, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just assuming things, but as you see, we got a gold star. Very good. So let's continue onwards with Rapunzel's story. After fifteen years, she's still as pretty as a broken jaw, and as foretold, the ninny pricks her finger and falls asleep. Seriously, I'm going to nod off too if all we get is a drop of blood. Make it foul. Too tidy. Of course, 15 years have lovingly passed and our Briar Rose has now grown quite the lady. But unfortunately, well, 
if we know anything of our stories. Fifteen years means a lovely curse comes for her. Simple neck of her prick of her finger. And she goes lulled into a hundred years sleep. A fake death, a death-like state you may you may claim. But, you know, I have to agree with Grimm. If we were to get just a single drop from a nicked finger from a eviler than thou curse, it would be kind of disappointing. Wouldn't you agree? Um, at least we'll be able to do, we can easily say something to the contrary of that, to fix that. Robin' stomping, butt kicking good! And to make sure no one interferes with these plans of mine, for good measure, let's get rid of the cleaning crew. Let's just say they're off duty. And they won't be needed right now. Certainly they won't be needed for a good century or so. Thanks. They have all the time in the world to wait. <laughs> Besides, it would be grand, it would be glorious. And who is to care? Oh. Hello, Briar Rose. Thank you for helping me describe defile and deface your own house but hey that I appreciate the hard work the work I appreciate the the kind gesture and outfit that's really nice of her well time to have her have a date with destiny I suppose it waits for no one I can hear the sound of screaming and wailing children from so far away. And as you saw on the way down, there is yet another secret to acquire, and it's a bit of a hard, it's kind of a pain in the ass to acquire, which I do think we can just. I d forgot there was death water down there. How foolish of me. There we go. So, that's take there's that taken care of, so let's. Torment these little hellions, eh? Oi, children, hush! Uncle Grim is left. Hey, hey, kids, kids, calm down, calm down. There's nothing to worry about, nothing to be afraid of. Sure, a dark man has appeared and arrived, and probably bringing what you consider unnatural fear to your world, but there's nothing to be afraid of. All you have to know is that I, I will make everything it. better in time. Think about it. You get to remain young for a very long time. You don't have to worry about becoming children. Admittedly, I probably, admittedly, I probably deserved that one, I feel. Oh well, that's tragic. Do I, oh, that's right, I need to wait for it to get up, and then get into it and send upwards. Ah! <gasps> Did I mention I'm absolutely garbage when it comes to- That's how I just walked up. I don't know. But did I mention I- Oh my god, those kids were in harmony there. That was absolutely terrifying. Yes, I think we've established that. Yes, the filthy man is here. And yes, he will make. He is. What is with this choir of children? All saying this in unison! I'm missing my turn because of this. Oh, for God's sakes, come on. Lower yourself. Now raise yourself up so I can get onto you. Good. There we go. Now, doesn't it? Right. Liquids have drowned my sorrows, but this is ridiculous. That was I don't think that was meant to happen. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but I was physically stuck on the cage for a while for a very brief second before I felt plunged back. Hey! Kids! Hush you all! No, you guys were enduringly cute a while ago. Now you guys are just becoming annoying. Blame you all. 
I will make sure I come back here and have you all die a miserable death. As right as you all deserve, you miserable little people. Hush! I was being all kind and happy before. Oh, I don't even know if I should let you go. Hush! So rude. He will not listen. Hush! Every one of you, hush! No, 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 wait, am I, <laughs> wait, am I actually, oh, you know, there's something, <laughs> Forget well, I mean, it got me up here at least, so I can appreciate that it's letting me get up here a little quicker, but, how does that, ha why did that happen the same time? Alright, good, I'm done, I'm free from this little silly nonsense, screw you little children, I don't want to listen to your nonsense anymore, oh, Best spot, didn't I? Oh dear. Aha! That'll keep him dozing for a spell. But it means we're on the road again. Graham, I'm not sure what you mean by on the road. I mean, I guess if you're meaning metaphorically, we're going down the road again to perhaps when Sleeping Beauty goes to sleep and the brambles and whatnot. I mean, it probably might be the case. It makes some sense, so. Yeah, let's continue onwards with her with Sleeping Beauty's story then. <laughs> this arrogant miller tells the king his daughter can spin straw into gold. The king commands, show me or die. Thanks, Dad. A peculiar little mannequin offers to assist her in exchange for her firstborn child. The girl wishing to live agrees. There's something unnatural about exchanging babies for wishes. How about I give you your first try? Make it rotten. Bargain. Charge! Hello, everyone. Welcome back to American Geese Grimm. This is the tale of, Rap of Rumpelstiltskin. I actually like this tale. It's a, it's a wonderful warning tale of don't just give your child away for, because you know you're an you're a complete and utter twit and ignoramus because well you had to claim to the king that your daughter could do a skill that she had not the skill that she didn't even have the aptitude for and that she is forced to do so or get absolutely murdered again all of the father's fault because he could not keep his gloating mouth shut because he wanted to show up everyone else. It's really his fault. It's really his fault that his child, you know, for the most part, is guilty late, but stomp away. Amazingly is usually left like un without a name. And well, the main part of this is eventually, as she's despairing because she, you know, she can't spin straw gold from straw. I a rather peculiar man shows up. Who offers about I give you her first A man who will give her what she needs in exchange for her his her firstborn child. Make it nasty. Which in her case it sounds like a pretty fair deal, I mean Sure, she'll give up the life of a child that she doesn't know yet. Since at this point, she's really just more concerned saving Stop her own it! neck at this point. Which, in many respects, is understandable given that, again, it's her dad's fault that she's even in this situation that she didn't even ask for. But what can we do? Well, in the end. Well, I know how the story goes. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, eh? In the meantime, we have to do a little bit of rapid fire. And hello, hello, sir. Peculiar man who I clearly do not know your name. Don't be good. Yes, clearly, I don't know your name. Rump and stump. <laughs> of course not. Of course Rump not. And stump. Either way, Rump we have stump. a little bit more to go either way. So. Make it disgusting. Which you have to admit, 
chomping scump. Which you have to admit is a lot. This is a lot of gold. A lot of straw to make gold from. And that's. This is a lot of work to do in one night, basically. And again, all thanks to her father that she's even stuck with this, like. Sort of somewhat terrible deceit that she can't really walk away from because, again, if she can't, she dies, and, well. Any self-respecting pro- oh my god, did you just fi- Grim, did you just phase through solid matter and just gave physics the finger? I know you're, you commonly do that, but, um... No. That, that, um, there are pro there, there's kind of precedents where that sort of- Bad things happen when you do that. Grim, please. There's integrity that needs to be made here. Oh well. Either way, we're nearly at the end of this first, this beginning tale, so. And we do have. It gets, and unfortunately, the Chomping scenes here stomp. get much longer in this tale, so. I might have to split this up into Stomping. a later part, so unfortunately, with this, let's end the scene with that. Oh yeah! Solid gold rocks! We dropped it on him! We flattened him. The king who would have killed you now won't turn you loose! When's Junior due? Well, get to it. I'll take back in a few. Rapunzel must have hit puberty by now. And with that, this was Rumpel Siltskin. I will continue I will see you all in the next scene. Until then, until Wait a minute. Why is there a 